Hey, what's good, Body Sculpting Club? This is Selma Batiste. Um, right, in, right now I'm just doing a little video blog. It's kind of hard for me uh, with finals week to, to get to uh, writing a lot of articles and stuff like that. So some people have asked me questions so far about, um, you know, workouts and procedures. So I'm going to give you some rule of thumbs. One of them is you want to know what your goal is first. Uh, there's a difference between bodybuilding, uh, fitness, uh, weightlifters, powerlifters, you know, sprinters. These people have different types of fitness goals that they're trying to meet. I know some bodybuilders that are just not fit. They look good, but they're not fit. And I know some fit people that cardiovascular wise, they're really, you know, they, they're really um, good at what they do. They run for a long time and things of that nature. But when it comes down to the power aspect or the build, they're really not, you know, the aesthetics aren't even like they might have big legs and then no upper body. Uh, same thing with different sports it just depends on what you're playing and what your goal is. If you are trying to achieve overall body development, you have to take two things into consideration. One, your main muscle groups, which are the bigger ones, which is going to be your quads, your hamstrings, um, your core, like your chest and your back, thighs. These are, these are internal. This is what gives you st your stability when you're lifting, and especially your abs these muscles are usually stabilizing muscles. The other muscles sure are like your arms, biceps, triceps, you know, the smaller muscle, motor muscles, shoulders, you know, uh, forearms, you know, calves. These muscles take, take you know, they, 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 they work along with them, but they don't take as much uh, weight or can't bear as much weight as the other bigger muscles. So with that in mind, common sense would forbade us to burn those little muscles out before we burn out the big muscles. Because one of them is going to lack. If you burn out your smaller muscles, motor muscles before you get to the bigger muscles, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a lack of development in the bigger muscles. They're not going to be able to be pushed to their maximum when you have, you know, other muscles, the supporting muscles that were basically burnt out, like your biceps and triceps. If you're doing back, best thing to do is to, you know, do back first. There was a time when I felt, you know, I, you know, training with certain individuals, and and, um, you know, some pros and some semi pros, they tell me, you know, if your your biceps are overdeveloped. You know, what you, what you might want to do is you want to pre-fatigue them. And, you know, those are suggestions to pre-fatigue the bi um, biceps before you did back or pre-fatigue your triceps before you did, did chest. And I started realizing that a lot, of, a lot of the guys that were doing this, they were very experienced. They said it would, it would have you um, engage those, those core muscles or should I say the, the, the muscles that you're trying to isolate like your chest and your back more so than using your arms. Again, if you're not, if you're a novelist, this is something that's kind of hard to do because the type of weight that you'll be using to try to gain muscle, if you're trying to gain muscle or density, is going to be a lot lighter. Your 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 play weight is going to be a lot lighter. And when I say play weight, I mean something that's like 50 to 60 percent of your max, you know, your max one rep weight. And conditioning has to do with that as well, conditioning and intensity. If you're not conditioned to do conden you know, intense workouts for long periods of time, this is just gonna set you back, you know. And not only that, that when you're in when you're in that type of mode, you're very you're you're in what you call injury range. You know, you can easily injure yourself, especially if you're not used to the mechanics. You know, you're gonna be trying to contract your chest and or if you're if you're isolating your chest and your shoulders and triceps are gonna to want to get involved, but they're sore, 
now or they're basically pre-fatigued so they can't help you much and you know you can end up dropping the weight or one, you know one of the smaller motor muscles giving out um, which is why it's good to have a spotter as well but again it's not effective the best thing to do as a as a novelist or you know just somebody just trying to put on a little bit of size um, you know lean muscle mass is to you know work the foundations first work the big muscles first and then after you worked all the big muscles you got them out the way then you work the little muscles like your shoulders and your biceps and triceps and forearms and things of that nature just to give you the uh, overall even build um, which is kind of hard for some guys I've noticed some of them don't like to do legs or they half do legs or they they do all chest and you see them they have they have broad shoulders and they have broad shoulders and and triceps you know tricep muscles but then when it comes to chest the chest is you know lacks development because they never contracted you know they never they never actually isolated that muscle same thing with legs you know uh, there's going to come a time when you'll be able to do like legs twice a week if you if you constantly condition your legs and things of that nature um, but anyway, rule of thumb. Also, do push pull, especially if you're just starting out. It kind of keeps you from injury as well. Not to mention they're in localized area. Like if I do biceps and tries, I do them together because one one's pull, one's push. It gets it gets it gets more blood to the area. It gets the joints, the surrounding joints, and uh, ligaments warm, and allows me to actually put more weight on that I wouldn't be able to do if I was just isolating buys or just isolating tries on one day. You know, I use isolations, I use a lighter weight, something that I can squeeze and contract with. But, you know, again, it depends what your goals are. If you're trying to develop muscle and definition, or should I say muscle, and solid muscle, and lean muscle mass, you're gonna wanna try to do a push-pull, triceps, biceps, uh, hamstrings, quads, things of that nature uh, incorporate the abductors adductors you know these are these are things that you can you can do pretty much that will refrain you from getting injuries uh, abs and lower back uh, chest and back you know shoulders is something you can do you can do together because you have the trapezius in the back and then you have you have the side you know the, the side muscles of the other tricep shoulder muscles and then you have the fronts so I mean they could be separated and done on the same day you know you might not might not be as work as heavy when you first start as you want to but if that's the case then just stick with shoulder presses for a while until you develop that strength and do side laterals and rear delts um, you know after off the, after after the pressing motion in order to finish off your um, your delts and then keep at it and after a while your intensity you can raise your intensity and you'll be able to do the weight and hit all three sides you know uh, your of your shoulders and uh, get great development in in, um, in size mass even shoulder shrugs throw them in there <laughs> anyway this is Selma Batiste from Body Sculpting Club I hope I've helped some people that are looking for routines um, Another benefit to this before I, before I leave is the benefit to doing these type of exercises, you shorten your workout week, you shorten your time with most effective efficiency because while you're doing chest or if suppose you choose chest and back, while, while right after you finish a chest exercise, you move to a back exercise, back and forth, it'll let your chest rest while your back is working and then vice versa, you finish four sets faster than you ever did. Um, prior to just sitting out and waiting on the bench till your chest you know recuperates for a minute and your heart's still pumping so you're actually you're um, you get you know your your heart is pumping volume of blood through your body and it's still working so you increase your you increase your endurance rate and you also increase your strength which increase your body temperature and fat burner properties so you're going to be burning more fat than you would have if you just did a resting set um, and when you're finished, you, since you shorten your workout time, you can also just go to the cardio machine after you finish and your heart rate is still up and, you know, get you 20 minutes in. You don't have to do cardio as long now because you've already started burning off 
burning off fat probably by the end of the 30 minutes or 30 to 45 minutes training if you're training intently um, that you wouldn't if you were just doing um, you know isolation exercises like just doing chest one day doing back one day and um, you know taking rest in between so it's a synergistic effect the benefits is increased fat loss less cardio not too many people really like to do cardio uh, um, and also you know your muscles and body move and develop together in tune you have a, a more of a balance and more aesthetics again so T is signing off from body sculpting club peace any questions you have post on the page and um, me or any of the other members will get back to you and answer you TGIF hope you guys are having a great Friday peace